urinary tract infection and uh, uh, took the most cause for urinary tract, no, most common bacterial cause for urinary tract in the first uh, uh, lecture, which is uh, Escherichia coli. And in the second lecture, we took other causes, which is the Proteus, Enterococci, and uh, uh, some viruses as the adeno -A virus, okay? Today, we are going to continue with the bacterial causes of urinary tract, okay? In any module, when you talk about any organism, you must categorize this organism. How can I categorize this organism? I must put this organism in its category, whether it is cocci or bacilli, whether this cocci is gram-positive or gram-E negative. This bacilli is gram-positive, gram-negative, or acid-fast E bacilli, okay? And so you must prepare a sheet in which you classify the bacteria into cocci, gram-positive, or gram-negative, bacilli, gram-positive, gram-negative, and, uh, uh, and acid e fast. okay? Type. In the first lecture, we took E. coli. E. coli, if I classify E. coli, we put E. coli in which uh, category? I want an answer. E. coli is bacilli or cocci? Yes, excellent. It is bacilli, gram positive or gram negative? Gram negative. E. coli is a gram negative e bacilli. Okay, in the second lecture, we took Proteus and Enterococci. Proteus is uh, categorized in which category? Salam. Yes, they are also bacilli and gram E uh, 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 negative. Okay, and what about the entire cocci? From its name. Enterococci. Yes, it is cocci, gram positive or gram negative. Uh, cocci, the enterococci is gram positive or gram negative. No, the entire cocci is gram positive. The only gram negative you have in uh, uh, in your curriculum on your in your microbiology curriculum is the Neisseria. Neisseria is the only gram negative cocci. Staph, strep, entero, all these are gram positive e cocci. Okay. Today we are going to to. Uh, um, to explain two gram negative bacilli and one E cocci, which are uh, uh, causes of uh, uh, UTI. Okay. Today we are going to the first gram negative bacilli we have is Klebsiella. Okay. Klebsiella, E. coli, and Proteus all belongs to the same family, which is Enterobacteriaceae. Clipstella, E. coli, and Proteus all belongs to the same family, which is Enterobacteriaceae. Enterobacteriaceae includes gram-negative bacilli. From its name, Enterobacteriaceae, where is it? Uh, what, what is its habitat? Yes, its habitat is the intestine. Excellent. So, is 
every gram negative bacilli living in the intestine is considered an intero or belongs to the family enterobacteriaceae, the question is A, yes or no? The answer is yes or no. Is, are, is any gram negative bacilli living in the intestine considered enterobacteriaceae? What is the answer? Yes or no? No, yes. Excellent. It is no. So, what is the criteria that a gram negative bacilli living in the intestine belongs to this family? There is four criteria or four characteristics that makes a, a gram-negative bacilli living in the intestine belongs to this A family. Number one, they must be a facultative anaerobe. Number one, it must be a facultative anaerobe. What does a facultative anaerobe mean? Hmm. What is a facultative anaerobe? What does a facultative anaerobe mean? Yes, a facultative anaerobe means it can live in aerobic and anaerobic media or, or anaerobic media but prefers more aerobic conditions. Yes, excellent. Like, by number one, it must be a facultative anaerobe. Number two, it is oxidase negative. It must be oxidase negative. It does not, oxidase negative means it does not produce the oxidase enzyme. Number three, it does not ferment, it, 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 it usually ferments el, 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 el glucose. Or it must ferment from el carbohydrates at least el glucose. Number four, it reduces the nitrate into a nitrite. Clipsiella, E. coli, and Proteus all has these four criteria, and so they are considered an, as an enterobacteriaceae. Okay? Type. Clipsiella, as we have said, they are gram negative bacilli. In, uh, the, uh, its main habitat is the intestinal tract uh, uh, of man, but but it can also occur in other habitats. It may occur in the mucosa of the respiratory tract, usually the upper respiratory tract, because the mucosa of the lower respiratory tract is sterile. It may also occur in the environment, in the uh, in surface water or soil or a plants. The genus includes four important species. Clipsiella nemoni, Clipsiella ocini, Clipsiella rhinoscleromatis, and Clipsiella oxytos. Clipsiella nemoni is responsible for el, 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 el most common medical A conditions, okay? And less frequently is Clipsiella A oxytosa after Clipsiella A nemoni. In any organism, number one, I must introduce this organism. The introduction is that I ask about its morphology, cultural characters, and biochemical e reaction. The, the first question in any organism, I must know its morphology, its, its cultural characters, and its uh, um, biochemical e uh, reactions. Type Clipsiella, as we have said, it is gram-negative bacilli, non-motile, and usually capsulated. Eclipsiella is gram negative bacilli, non motile capsulated. So what is the difference between its uh, 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 um, the other member of enterobacteriaceae, which is E. coli? El e. coli is also gram negative bacilli. But what about the motility? Is it motile or not motile? Uh, 
الايكولاي از موتايل اور نان موتايل موتايل اكسلنت وات اباوت الكبسول از ات يوجوالي ايكولاي كبسوليتد ايكولاي از يوجوالي non capsulated some strains only may be a capsulated but clepsiella is usually a capsulated يبقى difference between e coli and clepsiella both are gram negative بس اللي however e coli is motile and usually non capsulated while clepsiella is non motile and usually a capsulated okay ال enterobacteriaceae this large uh, uh, family has been classified according to its ability to ferment the lactose into lactose fermenter and non-lactose fermenter. There is a selective differential media on which enterobacteriaceae grow well, which is what is the selective differential media that enterobacteriaceae grow well on it? Hmm. Any answer? Yes, excellent. McConkey. McConkey. What, what is the substance inside the McConkey that made it selective for an enterobacteria or for enteric bacteria? McConkey contains? No. McConkey contains bile salts. Bile salts is the selective substance which allow the growth of الانتيريك بكتيريا از كليبسيلا ايكولاي وبروتيس انتيروبكتيريس اند انهبيت نون انتستينال اي بكتيريا اوكي اند سو اول انتيروبكتيريس جرو ويل اون ذيس اي ماكونكيز ميديا اوكي وات اباوت لاكتوز نو لاكتوز از يوز تو ديفرنشييت ذيس انتيريك بكتيريا انتو لاكتوز فيرمنتر اند نون لاكتوز فيرمنتر اف ذا بكتيريا كان فيرمنت لاكتوز ات برودوسز روز بينك كولونيز اون المكوكي اوكي اند سو ايكولاي اند كليبسيلا بوث كان فيرمنت اللاكتوز اند برودوس روز بينك كولونيز ديو تو فيرمنتيشن اوف اللاكتوز هاويفر بروتيس از نون لاكتوز فيرمنتر اند سو ات داز نوت ات برودوسز بيل كولونيز اون المكوكي اوكي This is page 72. Page 72. Okay. Usually, Clipsiella, as we have said, it is capsulated. And so, usually the rose pink colonies, as you see, is, is mucoid due to the presence of the capsular material in, a, in this a organism or, or in these E. colonies. Okay. Now, what about biochemical reaction? Usually, as we have said, Clipsiella as an E. coli, they can ferment all sugars, which is glucose, lactose, maltose, mannite, sucrose, and salicine. Okay? On TSI, TSI stands for triple sugar iron. Triple sugar, it contains, this media contains three sugars, which, which are glucose, Lactose and sucrose. The organism can, this organism, Clepsiella, or either an E. coli, both can ferment all sugars producing acidic butt and uh, an acidic slant. Yani acidic butt, which is a yellowish, uh, 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 which is yellowish in color, while an acidic slant also is yellowish in color production of gas as you have seen this cracks in the media or this elevation of the media is due to information of a gas type what about its MVIC? MVIC we have taken MVIC in the e coli which is in dual test methyl red vp a vogue proscover test and a citrate clipsial anemone is opposite to an e coli in its MVIC. Elkipsiella pneumonia is indole negative, methyl red negative, 
VP positive and citrate positive, while in E. coli, which you have studied before, is indole positive, methyl red positive, VP negative, and citrate A negative. All this will be explained again well in the practical A uh, sections, okay? But this is the first question, which is what is the organism in which we must describe its morphology, cultural characters, and biochemical A reaction? Okay. The second question is what is its pathogenicity? What is its pathogenicity usually includes the virulence factors and the diseases caused by this organism? The main virulence factor of the Klebsiella is what? From the morphology. You have known it from the morphology. Yes, it is capsulated, and so the main virulence factor of this organism is the capsule. If, uh, the main virulence factor of the of Klebsiella is the capsule. Klebsiella can causes either community or hospital acquired infection. Usually, uh, these diseases are caused by Klebsiella pneumoniae, followed by or less frequently by Klebsiella oxytosa. Number one. It can cause urinary tract infection. If a number one, Klebsiella pneumoniae and Klebsiella oxytosa can produce urinary tract infection. And this is our concern in this urogenital module. Type. What about other diseases that this organism can cause? It can cause from its name. It is named Klebsiella pneumoniae. And so it can cause a, a, a pneumonia. They also can cause a wound or bloodstream infection or uh, can cause, uh, some strains can cause neonatal a, a, a sepsis or a meningitis, okay? Yep, and these are a, a disease caused by Klebsiella pneumonia and less frequently Klebsiella a oxytos. Here in our urogenital, number one must be UTA, UTI. But can Klebsiella cause others? Uh, diseases, yes, it can cause pneumonia, it can cause wound, uh, uh, and bloodstream infection and cause neonatal asepsis. But what about Klebsiella ozini and Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis? Klebsiella ozini and Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis cause a specific diseases. Ozini cause atrophic rhinitis, where Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis causes rhinoscleroma, which is a destructive granuloma of the nose and pharynx. Okay. What about the treatment? You must know that. In Tyrobacterici, all are uh, have high antimicrobial resistance. Usually, this resistance is mediated by the production of an enzyme known as beta lactamases. From its name, beta lactamases. Ace means enzyme that break down a substrate. This substrate is beta lactams, beta lactams antibiotic. Anyone know what are the beta-lactam antibiotics? Beta-lactam antibiotics includes which groups of antibiotics? Hmm. Yes, ampicillin, this is right. Uh, it, penicillin, huh? what? Cephalosporins, excellent. Penicillin, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactams. All these are known as beta-lactams. Beta-lactams antibiotics include penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactams. Usually, the resistance mediated by uh, these, uh, by Klebsiella or uh, Enterobacterici, is, is mainly due to the production of a beta-lactamase, which is known as ESBEL. ESBEL stands for Extended Spectrum beta lactamases extended spectrum beta lactamases include resistance to penicillin cephalosporins and monobactams but it reserves the carbapenems and so if you uh, receive a report from the lab uh, uh, telling you that the, uh, 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 that there is a growth of uh, organism for example klebsiella or e coli and this organism or uh, this uh, Klebsiella or E. coli between brackets 
they wrote, they write ESBEL, you must know that ESBEL means that this organism cannot be treated by any of the penicillins or the cephalosporins or the monobactams, and it must be, uh, but can be treated by carbapenems as imipenem or ilium. This is very, very important in the uh, clinical career. Okay? Type. And so, so since it has high antimicrobial high resistance, in between some severity testing should be done to, uh, to, to give the patient the most, most proper antimicrobial uh, uh, death drug. Okay, okay. This, this is, is our, our first talk. And uh, this, this is presentation. Uh, uh, then the, the second so thing is, is we will take, take another, another gram negative, negative bacillus. The second gram negative bacillus. In our So the bonus is, is a gram negative cell So the bonus may be present in the intestinal tract of man. man. Is it considered an enterobacterial or not? So the bonus is not considered an enterobacterial disease. Why should the bonus is not considered an enterobacterial disease? Because, because it does, does not, not fulfill the, the four criteria we have set before. Number, number one. one. So, so the bonus is, is, is an unfermented. It cannot, cannot prevent any carbohydrate. And so, if it in in theory of it, 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 it must have at least fermented glucose. And so, this this makes the, the bonus a gram negative like like. That they can present in the intestine that does not belong to this specimen. This is the first disease. The second disease is that so the bonus is is aerobic, and we have said that that any any aerobic disease must be of a concurrent and aerobic. This is is the second disease. Now number three, so the bonus is is oxidative positive, and we have said that that. The interior of the must not be oxidative. Okay, okay. And this is for three reasons. The three So the most, so which is a gram negative acidity that may be present in the intestine, does not belong to this family, which is the interior of the Okay, okay. This genus is the most important species. This genus is the most important species. This is the one more energy dosa. Usually, have a, 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 a main habitat of this organism. Usually, with moist, moist environment. This is organism prefers a moist environment. Okay, okay. And as moist soil and plants, and usually, usually the, the, the most, most the, the moist soil is in the as a floor. Usually, it can be present. In the GIT or moist body sites. There, there is an important habitat also for this organism, which is the hostile environment. As we have said, that it has a predilection for moist environment. And so, so can grow in the hospital environment in, in the tap water. Or raw water that can contain mineral nutrients or traces of nutrients. Or more often, it can grow in some some infections. Some some infections that is used to disinfect the surfaces in the hospital. This is because it can have the ability to grow in this area. Infections, okay? And so so must usually remember that so the monoclonal genome is one one of the most important. Is one of the most important hospital acquired uh, organisms uh, that they be acquired in the hospital. Okay. That's the more it's present causes, usually it causes this. Much of the diseases, okay? okay. Uh, as, as our, uh, our as your colleague Ahmed said, said that this is so the one has been taken in other, other diseases. Yes, yes, I know. Usually it has had 
take it in must must this is, this is only a very very uh, remember of, of this that we organize to remember that it is one of, our, our, uh, of, of the common causes of usually it has been taken in the musculoskeletal this is only a very brief uh, remember of this key organism to remember that it is one of, uh, of the common causes of a uh, urinary tract infection, especially hospital acquired uh, 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 UTI. Okay, it can cause other uh, in, uh, uh, diseases. Yes, it can cause other diseases you have taken before in other e modules. Okay, the third organism in our uh, uh, lecture today is Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus, from its name, it belongs to the category cocci. Is it gram positive or gram negative? Yes, it uh, no. S Salam, it is right, it is gram positive. Haggag, it is wrong, it is not negative. The only gram negative cocci you have in microbiology is Neisseria. Neisseria is the only gram negative cocci. The gram positive cocci you have is Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, and Enterococcus. Staphylococcus, what is the morphology of this genus? We have taken before this genus in the uh, musculoskeletal module. Huh? What about uh, uh, morphology of this organism? Yes, they are gram positive cocci. Uh, what is its arrangement? Yes, they are gram positive cocci arranged in groups or a or clusters. This genus is differentiated from another gram-positive cocci, which is the streptococci, by which test staphylococci is differentiated from the streptococci, by which biochemical test Catalase, excellent. Catalase differentiates staphylococci from streptococci. Staphylococci is catalase positive, while streptococci is catalase A negative. Catalase positive means that it produces the catalase enzyme, which breaks the H2O2 into water and a, uh, oxygen. Okay? Type. There is another, this uh, catalase test differentiates in the genus Staphylococci from the genus Streptococci. There is another test that differentiate or that uh, class, uh, categorize the, uh, uh, or, or, or classifies the Staphylococcus into two uh, uh, groups. What is this test? What is the biochemical test? Yes, coagulase, excellent. Coagulase classifies the staphylococcus genus into coagulase positive staphylococci and coagulase negative staphylococci. Coagulase positive staphylococci have been explained before in the uh, musculoskeletal, which is staphylococcus aureus. And so we are not going to talk about it today. Can staphylococcus aureus cause UTI? Yes. It can cause urinary tract e infection, but we are not going to talk about it today because we have taken this organism before in the musculoskeletal e module. Today we are going to talk about the coagulase negative staphylococci. The coagulase negative staphylococci, the most important coagulase negative staphylococci are Staphylococcus epidermidis and Staphylococcus saprophyticus. What about the morphology of these coagulase negative staphylococci? We'll start first with the staph epidermides. Uh, what about the morphology of uh, staph epidermides? Uh, staph epidermides is. What is, the, what, what is its morphology? Yes, they are gram. 
positive cocci. There's a missing something in the morphology. Gram positive cocci, what, what is its arrangement? Yes, gram positive cocci arranged in clusters. They are gram positive cocci arranged in clusters, similar to the same, oh, they have the same morphology as Staph aureus, but they differ is from Staph aureus in some cultural characters. They grow on blood agar as Staph aureus, but Staph aureus on blood agar, what is the cultural character of Staph aureus on blood agar? On blood agar, Staph gives uh, what type of colonies? Yes, it gives a beta hemolytic colonies. Yes, it gives beta hemolytic colonies on blood agar. What about coagulase negative or staph epidermidis? They give non hemolytic colonies. Excellent, Salam. Also, they give golden yellow E colonies. The, the colonies of staph aureus on blood agar is usually they are golden yellow in color surrounded by zone of uh, uh, or clear zone of beta a hemolysis but what about staph epidermidis or staph saprophyticus they on blood agar they give white non-hemolytic colonies on a blood a agar okay type there is another uh, media on which uh, staphylococci can grow it is a selective uh, uh, differential media and we have taken it before in Staph aureus. Uh, what is this selective differential media? On which Staphylococci can grow and, uh, and, uh, uh, and be differentiated. What is this media? Yes, excellent. It is manitol salt agar. Manitol salt agar is a selective differential media on which staph can grow and this genus can be differentiated into staph or coagulase staphylococci if epidermidis by its ability to ferment el manitol staph aureus on manitol salt gives what type of colonies Staph aureus on manitol salt gives what type of colonies? Is it is it manitol fermenter or non-fermenter? Yes, it is fermenter, and so it gives yellow colonies on a manitol a salt. The yellow colonies of staph aureus on manitol salt agar, it is not due to production of a, a yellow endopigment of staph aureus. No, it is due to a fermentation of a manitol present in this a, a media. Now, what about a, a staph epidermides? Staph epidermides is non-manitol fermented, and so it gives pink colonies on a manitol salt a agar. Okay? You have a, this is a morphology and cultural characters of a staph e, uh, uh, epidermis. Right. What about its pathogenicity? Usually, the main virulence factor of staph epidermidis is the glycocalyx or slime. This glycocalyx or slime, they, it is an extracellular polysaccharide. Okay? This extracellular polysaccharide allow the organism to colonize on the surfaces, usually prosthetic devices. Prosthetic devices means artificial devices that is used to replace a missing organ, okay? Usually prosthetic devices may be a prosthetic joint or a prosthetic valve, okay? When the organism attaches to this uh, uh, prosthetic devices, it starts to form a biofilm. A biofilm, what is a biofilm? A biofilm is formed of aggregates of the microorganism attached to each other with this extracellular polysaccharide and covered by this extra polysaccharide to attach to, uh, 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 to the surface, okay? 
يبقى biofilm is an aggregate of microorganisms on on the surface surrounded and attached with this extracellular polysaccharide matrix. طيب what is the advantage that uh, uh, of uh, what the advantage of forming a biofilm? Usually, when an organism forms a biofilm, it has two advantages. Number one, this biofilm protects the bacteria from the host from the host defenses. This biofilm act uh, to protect the host uh, to protect sorry the, the bacteria from the host a defenses. This is number one. Also, it allowed the organism to be more antibiotic a or or more multi drug resistance or antibiotic resistance because within the biofilm. The bacteria exchange their genetic material, and so they acquire different e genes for antibiotic e resistance. Also, the biofilm act as a barrier for an antibiotic, and so the bacteria inside the biofilm usually are antibiotic e resistance. Okay, but this is the main virulence factor of this Staph epidermidis, which is formation of a bio e film. Our, our formation of biofilm on top of prosthetic e devices, allowing it to form or to cause what? To cause this is uh, uh, this is different pictures of a biofilm. This is these are the uh, cocci attached to each other by an extracellular polysaccharide matrix and to a, a surface. Okay, this is another picture. By an electron microscope showing this is the cocci and this interlacing extracellular uh, uh, polysaccharide matrix attached uh, 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 connecting this uh, uh, cocci with each other and with the uh, with the uh, uh, prosthetic devices. Okay. Type. What what are the diseases caused by this staph epidermis? Epidermidis is a normal skin flora in 100% of the uh, 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 population. Yani all uh, 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 persons carry staph epidermidis as a normal skin flora. But if I, uh, um, uh, yani when I, uh, uh, I found that this organism is isolated from certain uh, uh, infections. Can I consider this organism the pathogen or only a skin contaminant? I will consider this organism a pathogen in case of what? In case that the patient is uh, um, or have a prosthetic device as what? As the, as the patient has a prosthetic valve or the patient has a prosthetic joint. And so if I uh, isolated this organism in a patient with a prosthetic device. So here in this condition, this organism is considered to be the pathogen and not a contaminant. Okay, but if you, uh, uh, if in a, 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 a blood, uh, if you have a specimen of blood uh, culture and uh, 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 or sorry, a wound and this wound uh, uh, um, isolated staph epidermides. The report from the lab came with a uh, staph epidermides as the isolated uh, organism. Because will I consider staph epidermides in this condition as the causative agent? Now, usually it is not considered as the causative agent because it may be a skin contaminant eh, and the skin was not properly disinfected in this eh, case and uh, the organism and this organism have been isolated in AL culture okay and so we will give an uh, we, uh, we will consider staph epidermis as the as the pathogen usually in patients with prosthetic eh, devices okay type can it cause urinary tract infection? Yes, it can cause urinary tract infection, especially in patients using urinary e or in catheterized e, uh, 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 patients. Okay, you have a staph epidermidis. Usually, the infections are mainly endogenous. Endogenous, and the source of infection is uh, is from the same e person. Okay, as it is, it's 
normal skin ايه فلورا اوكي يبقى endogenous and usually associated with prosthetic e, uh, uh, devices. It can cause urinary tract infection. Yes, it can cause urinary tract infections. Usually in patients or, or usually in catheterized e, uh, e, uh, uh, patients. Okay. طيب. Laboratory diagnosis. Usually in morphology, as we have said, they are gram negative. Uh, sorry, they are gram positive. Cocci arranged in clusters. In culture on blood agar, they give non hemolytic white colonies. On manitol salt agar, they give pink colonies due to they are non manitol fermenter. But uh, staph epithelitis must be differentiated from the other uh, um, coagulase negative, which is the staph saprophyticus by the novo biocene uh, uh, disc. Staph epithelitis is novo biocene sensitive. Novobiocene, staph epidermidis, novobiocene sensitive. When I put the novobiocene disc, I found that it, in case of staph epidermidis, the organism, there is a, a zone of inhibition around the antibiotic disc, meaning that the organism is sensitive to this e antibiotic. But in case of uh, um, staph saprophyticus, it usually it is resistant to an AL novobiocene type. Is treating uh, uh, diseases caused by or infections caused by staph epidermidis difficult or easy? It is usually difficult. Why? Number one, because usually infections occur in the prosthetic or on uh, prosthetic devices in which the organism forms the biofilm. And we have said that biofilm usually makes the organism multi-drug resistant or, anti, or highly antibiotic e resistant. And so the treatment of these infections is usually e, uh, uh, difficult, okay? Time. The second, coagulase uh, uh, negative staph is staph saprophyticus. Usually it is similar to staph epidermidis in all the morphology and cultural characters we have said before. However, it we can differentiate between staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus using the novo biocene A disc. Staph saprophyticus is usually novo biocene A resistant. Okay, staph saprophyticus is usually or forms usually part of the normal uh, uh, flora of the skin and the mucosa of the genitourinary tract. It, it is implicated in L, uh, urinary tract infections, especially in young sexually active females. It is considered the second important cause of urinary tract infection in young sexually active uh, uh, females. Uh, uh, it causes honeymoon uh, cystitis. It is usually have the ability to uh, of the organism to adhere to the uroepithelial cells, causing urinary tract infection in these young sexually active females. Usually ill treatment with uh, uh, um, Kinolos, okay. Thank you very much. Any question? Any question? No. I finished the lecture in English. If anyone has any question, I want to explain it in Arabic. Or everyone understands? Is there anyone with any question I want to explain it in Arabic? طيب شكرا جزيلا سلام عليكم اليورثرايتس والنيسيريا جونوري تمام يبقى موضوعنا النهارده يورثرايتس اند نيسيريا جونوري وات از ذا ديفينيشن اوف يورثرايتس زي ما احنا عارفين ان اليورينري سيستم از فورمد اوف تو كيدنيز اتش كيدني بور ذا يورد انتو تو يوريترز اند ذا تو يوريترز درين ذا يورد انتو ذا يورينري بلادر زين ذا بلادر جيت اوت اوف اور بادي ثرو ذا يوريثر اجين ذا يورين از فورمد ان ذا كيدنيز جيت اوت اوف اور بادي ثرو ذا يوريتر يورينري بلادر زين ذا يوريثر Okay, so urethritis is an inflammation of the urethra. What is this? itis? Itis stands for inflammation and any part of our body. The itis means the التهاب في urethra. The urethra is the canal, the exit of the urine or 
out of our body تمام in men في الميلز بيكون اليوريثرا is surrounded by the prostatic gland اوكي okay. يبقى urethritis is an inflammation of the urethra what is the urethra it is the uh, pathway for the exit of urine out of our body in males the urethra is surrounded by the prostatic gland Urethritis could be non-infectious or infectious. Non-infectious urethritis may be due to exposure to radiation, to chemicals, irritation. Our topics today, موضوعنا النهاردة هو infectious urethritis. يبقى التهاب في اليوريثرا, التهاب في قناة مجرى البول بسبب microbe infectious urethritis. Infectious urethritis could be sexually transmitted or post-traumatic. يعني إيه sexually transmitted infectious urethritis يعني المايكرو أورجانيزم بتاعي بيبقى acquired during sexual intercourse during sexual intercourse حصل transmission to a micro organism بقت infectious sexually transmitted infectious urethritis طيب هل في وسيلة تانية غير sexual intercourse ممكن يعمل infectious urethritis حاجة اسمها post traumatic urethritis يعني إيه post traumatic urethritis زي ما احنا شايفين this is the urethra تمام لو حضرتك بتركب urinary caster for your patient during insertion of a urinary caster if you are a surgeon وبتعمل surgical operation for your patient through the urethra تمام يبقى by surgical instrument or through insertion during insertion of urinary caster ممكن تعمل trauma و injury for urethra يبقى دي traumatic urethritis on top of this trauma in the urethra Any microorganism موجود على البرينيم on the skin of the external genitalia may enter with this surgical instrument or urinary caster and injure the urethra causing post-traumatic urethritis. تمام؟ يبقى أنا عندي in the infectious urethritis it is inflammation of the urethra caused by a microorganism. This microorganism transmitted during sexual intercourse, or alias sexually transmitted infectious urethritis. If it is post-traumatic, is they post-traumatic during surgical operation by surgical instrument during insertion of urinary catheter. When I break the line urinary catheter, I made the trauma and injury in the urethra. The injury and trauma did it. Samahed to enter the microorganism that is present in the external genitalia, like normal flora that is present in the perineum and in the external genitalia. والسكين انها تدخل الى اليوريثرا وتعمل بوست تروماتيك يوريثرايتس دلوقتي هنتعرف على اللي بتعمل لي انفكشوس يوريثرايتس مين هم الموست كومن اورجانيزم اللي بيعملوا لي انفكشوس يوريثرايتس اكيد هلاقيهم برضو مجموعتين سكشوال ترانسميتد يوريثرايتس اند بوست تروماتيك يوريثرايتس المايكرو اورجانيزم اللي بتعمل بوست تروماتيك يوريثرايتس هي اكيد البكتيريا اللي بتبقى موجوده از نورمال فلورا في الاكسترنال جينيتاليا وفي البرينيه وممكن تكون موجوده في الستول زي القشري الشاكولاي واثناء خروج الستول من الجسم بتعمل كونتامينيشن للبرينيه وبالتالي البوست تروماتيك يوثرايتس مينلي المين بكتيريا ممكن تكون قشري الشاكولاي لانها الموست كومن بكتيريا ذا انتستيف وممكن تعمل كونتامينيشن للبرينيه والسكين وتطلع لليوريثرا ديورنج تروما تعمل لي اكيوت بوست تروماتيك يوثرايتس مين كمان الاستافيلو كوكاي اند ستريبتو كوكاي دول نورمال سكين كونتامينت ممكن يكونوا موجودين على السكين واثناء الانسرشن اوف ذا سيرجيكال انسترومنت او اليوريناري كاستر يدخلوا معايا ويعملوا لي بوست تروماتيك يوريثرايتس يبقى البوست تروماتيك يوريثرايتس الموست كومن اورجانيزم هم مين؟ الاشريشيا كولاي ستافيلو كوكاي اند ستريبتو كوكاي ليه؟ لان هم دول اللي موجودين مينلي على البرينيم والاكسترنال جينيتاليا ودخلوا مع اليورينالي كاستر او السيرجيكال انسترومنت وانا عملت انجري وتروما فدخلوا عملوا اكيوت بوست تروماتيك يوريثرايتس الموضوع الثاني والاهم معانا النهارده هم السكشوال ترانسميت يوريثرايتس يعني مين هم الموست كومن بكتيريا او اورجانيزم اللي بيعملوا لي سكشوال ترانسميت يوريثرايتس اشهر واحده فيهم على الاطلاق ذا موست كومن از نايسيريا جونوري عشان كده اقول اسمها جونوكوكال يوريثرايتس يبقى النيسيريا جونوريا is a bacteria which is the most common cause of sexually transmitted urethritis. في مجموعة تانية less common المجموعة الأشهر أو البكتيريا الأشهر the most common is نيسيريا جونوريا. أي حاجة تانية هتعمل لي sexually transmitted urethritis are less common 
عشان كده جمعناهم كلهم في مجموعة واحدة وقلنا عليهم نون جونوكوكال يورسترايتس يبقى السكشوال ترانسميتد يورسترايتس اما جونوكوكال اور نون جونوكوكال الجونوكوكال اللي هي كوز باي نيسيريا جونيا هي الموست كومن وايل ذا نون جونوكوكال هي الليس كومن ودي الجروب اوف مايكرو اورجانيزم اشهرها الكلاميديا تراكوماتس يبقى ذا موست كومن بكتيريال انفكشن اوف نون جونوكوكال يورسترايتس تأتي بعد النيسيريا جونوريا على طول هي جوست نيكست نيسيريا جونوريا از كلاميديا تراكوماتس وات ار ذا اذر اورجانيزم ويش كان كوز نون جونوكوكال يورسترايتس مايكوبلازما مايكوبلازما لايك مايكوبلازما جينيتاليا مايكوبلازما هومينيس يوريا بلازما يوري ليتكر هيومن بابيلوما فيروس هيربس سيمبلكس فيروس تايب 2 اند تايكوموناس جاينيكس يبقى انا عندي الموست كومن سيكشوال ترانسميتد يورسترايتس is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea, causing gonococcal urethritis. This group are much less common than Neisseria. عشان كده قلنا عليهم non-gonococcal urethritis. Non-gonococcal urethritis, the most common microorganism of non-gonococcal urethritis is chlamydia trachomatis. The other much less common, uh, sorry, causative organism are mycoplasma, herpes simplex virus, human babyloma virus, and trichomonas vaginis. دلوقتي the main subject today is Neisseria. يبقى احنا بنتكلم النهاردة عن ال sexually transmitted urethritis caused by the most common bacteria is Neisseria gonorrhea. يبقى موضوعنا النهاردة هي Neisseria gonorrhea. Why? Because it is the most common cause of sexually transmitted urethritis. We selected Neisseria gonorrhea to discuss in details. What are Neisseria? All Neisseria. All the members of genus Neisseria are gram-negative cocci. زي ما احنا شايفين, they are gram-negative cocci, kidney-shaped, and they are arranged in pairs. Again, gram-negative cocci, kidney shapes, and arranged in pairs. All Neisseria are aerobic bacteria, and the key biochemical test for identification of Neisseria It is positive oxidase test. This is the oxidase positive test. And all members of the genus Neisseria are oxidase test positive. يبقى احنا دلوقتي نتكلم عن Neisseria. Why we are talking about Neisseria gonorrhea? Because it is the most common cause of sexually transmitted urethritis. Okay? It is gram negative cocci. Arranged in pairs, they are kidney shaped. They are not shaped in them. They are aerobic, and the key biochemical reaction for its identification it is oxidase test positive bacteria. Okay. هل كل النيسيريا هم النيسيريا جنورية وبيعملوا لي this type of infection? لا. في three major groups of نيسيريا. Again, the genus Neisseria includes many communities. يعني كتير جدا من Neisseria مش Neisseria جنوبية and they are normal communities, normal flora, non-monogenic. يبقى many of the genus Neisseria are normal communities, non-monogenic, normal flora. Present in the oral cavity and in the nasal cavity. يبقى معظم من Neisseria اللي يكون communities يكون موجودة في الoral cavity وفي nasal cavity. What are the examples of the normal Neisseria pigmentans? Neisseria lactamia, lactamia, Neisseria sepsia, and they are two normal flora of Neisseria, which are present in the oral cavity and in the nasal cavity. What are the pathogenic Neisseria? The pathogenic Neisseria are mainly Neisseria gonorrhea, the most common type. Neisseria gonorrhea, gono stands for the gonads, the sex organ. Why is Neisseria is excessive discharge? So Neisseria gonorrhea is a Neisseria which causes inflammation and excessive discharge of the gonadal of the sex organ. عشان أختصر كل الاسم ده for abbreviation of Neisseria gonorrhea is called gono cocci. The cocci which causes infection of the gonadal and excessive discharge. يبقى ممكن أقول عليها Neisseria gonorrhea وممكن أقول عليها gono cocci. The same The second pathogenic Neisseria is called Neisseria meningitis. 
और मैंने जो कि रिकॉर्ड कर अगेन माय सीरियल में भी जी इस बार जो है माय सीरियल कुछ कुछ जो है उधर शाम को आना बाहर था इट्स नॉट आउट ऑफ द कोर्स इट इज कॉल्ड मैंने जो कि कॉल देखो कॉल पर व्हिच कोर्स मैंने जो है ये बना है ना मेनली ग्रुप of my theory which is in mental normal for non androgenic present in oral care of the pharynx will other groups of my theory are androgenic our our today my one on hard here my theory would be here or going to call we in my theory of mtgs which is causing meningitis and it is not our our today we are talking about hard and in my theory would be which is pathogenic organism and causing the infection of the six organs the gonad with excessive urethral lesions what is my theory would be they may define as a cyst my theory would be or gram negative of all it may shape a range in pairs gram negative of all it may shape a range of gene pairs What about the cultural criteria of my species? My species is one of the most fastidious species. Yani, if it is a species, very delicate and requires very specific culture medium to its growth. It doesn't grow easily on the initial blood of a horse. If a species is not hard, it does not grow on the blood of a horse. Or many other species, it requires chocolate sugar. وزي ما احنا عارفين شكل الاخضر يبقى اهميه البلاد الاخضر عشان يحتوي على الاسيد الهيماتيكي ويسمح بنمو النيسيريا جنوريا تمام يبقى وات ذا كالتشر ريكوايرمنت فور نيسيريا جنوريا جرو اون شكل الاخضر اوكي ذا انريتشد ميديم جروس اوف نيسيريا جنوريا از ان شكل الاخضر اوكي باي باي تو مين ذا شكل الاخضر مور سيلكتيف وي اد انتي بايوتكس to the chocolate agar to make it a selected media that allows the growth of Neisseria gonorrhea only. And in this condition, the chocolate agar with the antibiotic addition to it is called modified thyroid media. Thyroid are two signs to add the antibiotic to the chocolate agar, making it a selected media easier isolation of the Neisseria gonorrhea. So for isolation of Neisseria gonorrhea, On the rich chocolate agar, this is an enriched media, or by modified thyroid hormone, which is a selected media, the chocolate agar was addition of antibiotics for easier isolation of the myceria gonorrhea. Okay. If you have any questions, please write in the chat box. What about the environment, the atmosphere needed for the myceria for its growth? It grow on chocolate agar, yes, as an addition medium. On a modified by fire and agar, as a selected medium. But it means in the atmospheric area, high temperature, carbon dioxide, and certain degree temperature. How to create this high temperature carbon dioxide in the atmospheric area of the culture break by putting the culture break in this candle jar? الجور ده هو اسمه كاندل جور لان انا بنحط فيه شمع كاندل اند اي لايت بنور الشمع ببلع الشمع وبعدين بنقفل كلوز ذا كاندل جور افتر كلوز اوف ذا كاندل جور ذيس كاندل ويل تيرن اوف هتطفي تمام والكربون دايوكسيد اللي كريتد انسايد ذيس كاندل جور از هاي كاندل سيرشن سو هاو تو كريت هاي كاندل سيرشن Carbon dioxide by addition of a candle light in the candle inside this jar, which is called the candle jar. Close of the candle jar will be followed by turn off of the candle due to excess or an increase of oxygen, and then the carbon dioxide created will be high in the air. What about the biochemical reaction for identification of mycelia gonorrhea? They may be found as a result in the oxidase test. It is the key test for identification of all types of mycelia. All the mycelia are oxidase test for it. Is there any biochemical reaction specific for mycelia gonorrhea? Yes, mycelia gonorrhea in addition for being oxidase test positive, they are able to ferment the glucose sugar 
with the reduction of acid ammonia. Again, if you add a magnesium ammonia, this fluid media which contains glucose, it will turn yellow to, to, due to production of acid. So, what are the biochemical reactions for identification of magnesium ammonia? After its isolation on the chocolate agar bar or fire fire bar, it can be identified by being positive. Oxidase test at her rally in here, a post oxidase test, we have to have a glucose media, a lay in the hassle fermentation in the glucose with production of acid. This all the biochemical reaction for identification of my serial gonorrhea. What about the variance factor? In here, in our way, we will say I am my media gonorrhea. To induce its pathogenesis. They must not have in the general factor, they are willing to say I did it in here, and then of course, it had a malady to produce the tissue to damage. The first business factor of my CDM area is called the bedroom law. If you remember, when we were in the factory, we said, oh, it was a bedroom law, it means the attachment to the whole of the bacteria cells. Now, what I'm talking about is the bacteria area, and this is small projection of the bedroom law. Which are organs of attachment, which help the attachment of the mycelia gonorrhea to the host epithelial cells. So the bilna is the most important virus factor for what? For attachment. Ashan al pasuk be a host epithelial cells. What are the other virus factors in virus? Main ego change the membrane of the membrane of the mycelia. It's not outer membrane change. المجموعة الأولى اسمها الأوفر بروتين ودي بريزنت في السيل ميمبرين أوف ماتيريا أند أجين إت هيلب الأتاتشمنت تو ذا بوست أوف ذا سيلز يبقى أنا عندي هنا في تو فاكتورز هيلب الأتاتشمنت تو ذا ماتيريا سيلز تو ذا بوست أوف سيلز تو أدفانس فاكتور وان أوف ذيم إز ذا بلاي ويتش هيلب الأتاتشمنت تو ذا بوست أوف سيلز أند ذا أوفر ميمبرين بروتين تو ذا أوفر بروتين يبقى أنا عندي The host cells, the over protein, present in the membrane, will be lodged as a projection from the cell surface of the body. What about the other protein membrane proteins called foreign protein? Again, the foreign protein that are present in the cell is in membrane, so that means it allows the bacteria to resist intracellular inside the host cells. So the foreign protein. Will help the mycelia to persist inside the cytoplasmic cells by the prevention of spreading lysosomal fusion. Now, we know that if you remember the cytosis, after the indulgence of the fusion of the fat lysosome, to allow the intracellular fusion of the bacterial cells inside the macrophages. In this bacteria, have a change in the foreign protein, which prevents the fat lysosomal fusion. What will happen to this bacteria? It will be this intracellular lymphatic cells and multiply inside it. A third relevant factor is the amyloid period or the lipo or the lipoparagraphy. In year one, in all the gram negative or the gram negative bacteria has a lipid A, which is an endotoxin, as an integral part of its cell and this endotoxin induces inflammatory reaction. But in case of mycelia, in the case of mycelia, the lipid is an endotoxin, we be attached to another carbohydrate or oligosaccharide, so it is called live oligosaccharide. So what is live oligosaccharide? Live oligosaccharide is that live oligosaccharide, which is the endotoxin, integral part of the cell wall, which is used to prevent inflammatory reaction, like the attached to another oligosaccharide. Yes, this live oligosaccharide suppresses. The oxidase first, and again the pouring protein. The pouring protein suppresses oxidative pressure. Here, the oxidative pressure, the oxidative pressure, the overall increase in superoxide this increase inside the oxidic cells after phagocytosis to destroy the intracellular bacteria. Again, this pouring protein suppresses. And again, this live oligosaccharide induces the inflammatory reaction. And again, it will suppress the oxidative pressure. Okay. The behavior of the oxidative pressure after phagocytosis. Now, when I have a bacteria, 
and this bacteria is involved by the phagocytic cells. After phagocytosis, there is an increase in activity of these phagocytic cells to improve to produce toxic molecules like super and by increasing consumption of oxygen and support oxygen is increasing consumption of oxygen by the phagocytic cells to produce toxic molecules like hydroxide and superoxide synthesis to destroy the bacteria. Again, I see the bacteria pour in the protein to suppress this oxygen dispersor. Okay. Again, the pores and very important, very, very factor in the IMI blood or when we get this immune blood in the protein. So it is an enzyme protein which destroys class A immunoglobulin. They are not in the national effect. In the class A immunoglobulin, it is the secretory immunoglobulin which brings on the epithelial cells and the other cells. So if the bacteria have an enzyme which can destroy this immunoglobulin A and inactivate it, this will make the bacteria more resistant to the immune system, allow the bacteria to persist and multiply the colonization of the nodes. Any question? Okay. So now we will talk about gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is the disease caused by. Okay, oxidative device, right? Okay. Inside the phagocytic cells, after phagocytic after the environment of the bacteria by the phagocytic cells, what will happen? The phagocytic cells try to kill the bacteria. Okay? By fibrosomal fusion and destruction of the bacteria by the lysosomal enzyme is one way of intracellular killing. The other method of intracellular killing is marked increases in the oxygen consumption inside the phagocytic cells. I think the islam is the new oxygen burst. Marked increase in the oxygen consumption. For what? For production of large amount of superoxide dismutase and hydrogen and in other toxic molecules. This toxic molecule will destroy the bacteria cells. Okay, this is the method of bacteria cell destruction inside the phagocytic cells. If the bacteria can suppress this toxic virus, it will decrease the production of this toxic molecule and so it can persist inside the phagocytic cells and multiply by the phagocytic cells. And then, okay. Now we will talk what is the disease of the body? My child is gonorrhea. It is called gonorrhea. So, what is gonorrhea? It is an infection which injects the gland, the bone stands for the gland, or the sex organs, and induces excessive discharge. Rhea is excessive discharge from the gland gonorrhea. This is the name of the disease. As we said, they met in the mode of transmission, it is a sexually transmitted disease. And we have the sexual intercourse by direct contact. Nigeria gonorrhea need direct intimate contact between the patient and his partner to transmit the infection. Why? Because it cannot survive dryness. So if Nigeria gonorrhea is present on a dry surface, on uh, the red linen and the bed sheet, it will not be transmitted to another people. It will die very rapidly. Nicelia gonorrhea, they metafana, it is very delicate, very fastidious bacteria. It cannot survive on dryness. It cannot survive in the outside environment. It cannot survive on the bed sheets and the linen. It needs direct, intimate, close sexual contact for transmission of infection. After transmission of Nicelia gonorrhea, it will be attached by, yes, by the surface pili, by the OBA, outer cell membrane protein to the host cell mucosa and epithelia, and it produces the immunoglobulin A proteins, which will destroy the surface immunoglobulin A. This will, will allow the bacterial adherence, colonization to the host cell mucosa. What else? It will persist the intracellular killing inside the phagocytic cells, and it will multiply inside the phagocytic cells by the mean of what? By the mean of pouring protein which suppress the oxidative and suppress 
زفاجو لايسوزومال فيوجن and now the gonococcyto brevis inside the phagocytic cell again this is the infection by Neisseria this is the Neisseria gonorrhea this is the external villi allow adherence tight adherence to the host cell then after intracellular entry it can pass from the epithelial again here it pass the epithelial it may engulf it by the phagocytic cells the monocyte and the granulocyte here is the Neisseria inside the phagosome. There is no phagolysosomal fusion. There is no intracellular killing. It can even multiply and persist inside the phagocytic cells. If your patient is immune suppressed, this bacteria may even escape and rupture these uh, phagocytic cells and escape to the blood, causing systemic infection or even invade the endothelial lining of the blood vessels and cause severe vasculitis in severely immunosuppressed patients. What is the manifestation? What is the symptoms? Eh, al-a'rad al-maradiyya min zay ma tafaqna in the Neisseria gonorrhea betusabib acute sexually transmitted urethritis with excessive urethral discharge. Again, the Neisseria gonorrhea causing acute urethritis with Excessive urethral discharge, gonorrhea. So your patient, in case of men, have acute urethritis, and this acute inflammation in the urethra will lead to painful micturition. Your patient has an inflamed urethra inside the penis, and this inflamed area will make the micturition painful. This urea, if this urea means a painful, this stands for pain, urea or difficult urea. Micturition, you have a painful micturition and excessive purulent discharge out of the urethra. This is the classical clinical picture of Neisseria gonorrhea acute urethritis in males. And I have a painful micturition and excessive urethral discharge out of the penis. This is in men. What about females? What about women? ايه أخبار الانفكشن في الفينيل؟ النيسيريا جونوريا زي ما قلنا إن هي sexually transmitted disease يبقى in female it can be infect the urethra this is the urethra and this is the urinary bladder it can infect the urethra causing urethritis but again in female it can ascend through the vagina infecting the cervix causing acute cervicitis or even up to the uterus this is the uterus and causing endometritis or spread to the fallopian tube and the ovary. This is the female genital tract. Again, this is the urinary bladder and this is the urethra. This is the vagina, cervix and uterus, fallopian tubes and ovary. Okay? So, in females, we have the urinary system and the genital system. Unlike, uh, sorry, in female, we have the urinary and the genital. Well, there is no genital system. يبقى أنا عندي في الفيميل أكيوت يورثرايتس okay. caused by Neisseria gonorrhea لكن كمان Neisseria gonorrhea may ascend through the vagina causing cervicitis or even endometritis in the uterus or even reaching the fallopian tube salpingitis طيب هل ممكن is there any possibility for Neisseria gonorrhea to persist in the vagina and causing vaginitis in adult females no vaginitis why because of the acidity of the vagina and the presence of the normal flora, which will not allow the Neisseria to persist in the vagina. The Neisseria will ascend through the cervix, causing cervicitis, to the urethra, causing the urethritis. لا, the Neisseria gonorrhea تنتقل sexual intercourse فقط. لا تنتقل بأي طريقة أخرى. لأنها محتاجة very close, uh, intimate, كونتاكت يبقى هتسبب ديسيوريا بينفول ميكتيوريشن نتيجة لليورثرايتس وهتسبب سيرفيسايتس والمانيفستيشن هتكون بيوريلاند سيرفايكال ديسيتشورج اوكي بيوريلاند سيرفايكال ديسيتشورج اباوت 50% اوف انفكشن في الفيميل بيكون اسيمتوماتيك ليه؟ لان ممكن يكون فيري ديب في السيرفكس 
فيكون not symptomatic وبالتالي ده هيؤدي إلى persistent of infection and spread ايه هي ال consequences of gonorrhea؟ consequences of gonorrhea يعني complication of gonorrhea if your patient is not treated العيان بتاعي ما تشخصش وما تعالجش يعني عنده persistent Neisseria gonorrhea multiplying in his blood what is the complication of gonorrhea consequences of gonorrhea in male in men the organism start its infection in the urethra yes it may spread up from the urethra to the prostate causing inflammation of the prostate prostatitis or even to the epididymis epididymitis and to the urinary bladder causing cystitis marked inflammation and the swelling of the bladder prostate and urethra what about complication in females زي ما قلنا ال infection will start in the cervix cervicitis it may ascend this is the uterus and these are the two fallopian tubes again this is the vagina cervix uterus right and left fallopian tubes right and left over if your patient have untreated persistent Neisseria gonorrhea infection, the bacteria will causing cervicitis and then it will ascend to the uterus causing marked inflammation of the lining of the uterus which is called endometrium and hence the name endometritis and then spread to the fallopian tube causing salpingitis. If a patient has endometritis and salpingitis, it's called pelvic inflammatory disease. Pelvic inflammatory disease, your patient will have a line of tactic be high fever and severe lower abdominal pain. High fever and severe lower abdominal pain. The ARR, these are the symptoms of pelvic inflammatory disease. What is the definition of pelvic inflammatory disease? Mixed endometritis and salpingitis. Inflammation in the lining of the uterus and the fallopian tube. And now, if this inflammation healed by fibrosis, لو العينة بتاعتك ال inflammation دي بقت persistent وحصل لها healing by fibrous tissue fibrosis مش ممكن يحصل closure لليوترس أو يحصل closure للفالوبيان تيوب وبالتالي ممكن يؤدي إلى ectopic pregnancy or even sterilis العينة بتاعتي تبقى infertile unable to get pregnant due to marked inflammation of the fallopian tubes and inflammation of the uterus it may lead to sterility, infertility or marked fibrosis and ectopic pregnancy حتى لو الحملة حصل بيحدث خارج الرحم نتيجة للكلوجر of the fallopian tube أو الماركت inflammation اللي موجود في اليوتر يبقى دي الكومبليكيشن in female في كومبليكيشن أعنف آه بس بتتطلب إيه immune suppression يبقى there is a more severe serious complication called disseminated gonococcal infection disseminated gonococcal infection or systemic gonococcal infection the gonococci reaching to the blood يبقى اسمها gonococcemia يبقى what is gonococcemia the gonococci the nyseria gonorrhea invading all lines of the immune system reaching the blood multiplying the blood your patient has gonococcemia or what is called disseminated gonococcal infection spreading systemic gonococcal infection okay this is more common in female, especially if your patient is pregnant. لأن أنتوا لو أنتوا عارفين إن الحمل بيبقى فترة انتقالية بيكون فيها الحامل عندها mild transient suppression of the immune system. يبقى ال pregnant female is transiently immune suppressed. إيه كمان لو أنا عندي immune suppressant patient, especially لو عنده dysfunction في complement component ولو أنتوا فاكرين إن الماك اللي هو الترمينال كومبلمنت كومبوننت من الاميونولوجي الماك اللي هو الترمينال مولكيول اوف ذا كومبلمنت ريسبونسبل فور ديستراكشن اوف ذا بكتيريال سيل يبقى لو انا عندي اميون سبريست بيش اور بريجننت فيميل ده هيالاو الجونوكوكاي تو سبريد تو ذا بلاد كوزنج جونوكوكيميا فروم ذا بلاد ات مي بي لوكاليزد ان ذا جوينت ليدنج تو اكيوت سيفير ارثرايتس اور بريد ان ذا سكين كوزنج سكين راش It may spread to the meninges causing meningitis to the heart and causing endocarditis, severe fatal condition. Again, Neisseria gonorrhea, 
may invade the endothelial lining of the blood vessels, leading to coagulation of the blood thrombosis, which is called disseminated intravascular coagulation, GIC, and shock, which is a fatal condition. It occurs only in severe immune suppressed patients or in female during pregnancy, leading to multiplying of multiplication of the bacteria in the blood. The bacteria was to the dam, gonococcemia. بدأت تنتشر في الجوينت وفي السكين وفي المينينجيس والهارت تعمل سيفير انفلاماتوري رياكشن انترافاسكولار كواجوليشن ثرومبوزيس اند ديث طيب ايه كمان if you have a pregnant female infected with نايسيريا جونورية during vaginal delivery اثناء الولادة ممكن النايسيريا جونورية transmitted to the eyes of the new need يبقى اجين Neonatal conjunctivitis is a severe inflammatory reaction of the conjunctiva of the neonate delivered by vaginal delivery from a mother with acute Neisseria gonorrhea, urethritis, and cervicitis. Okay, it's called neonatal conjunctivitis caused by Neisseria gonorrhea. It acquired by the neonate during vaginal delivery from a mother infected by Neisseria gonorrhea. يبقى ممكن تنتقل النيسيريا جنورية أثناء الولادة من الأم الحامل اللي عندها نيسيريا جنورية إلى الأيز إلى عيون النيونات ويتعملوا سيفير نيونيتال كونجكتفايت تمام؟ ممكن في اليونج فيميل أحيانا due to sexual abuse in young girls في اليونج girls بتكون الفاجينا الأسيدتي لسه مش هاي والنورمال فلورا still not mature فلو حصل sexual abuse in young girls ممكن يبقى عندي transmission of Neisseria gonorrhea with invade the vagina with invade the vulva تعمل vulva vaginitis. This may occur in young girls due to immaturity of the vaginal flora and acidity due to sexual abuse leading to transmission of Neisseria gonorrhea with severe acute vulva vaginitis. These are the pathogenesis or the Neisseria gonorrhea infection. Okay. Now we will start laboratory diagnosis of gonorrhea. Any question? Okay. Gali Ayin, I have a patient who be only I have painful micturition and excessive urethral discharge. Yib this is a suspect patient of gonorrhea. Yib a symptom of touch in Arab in the baby stick in the Ayin, painful micturition and excessive urethral discharge. يبقى what about the specimen زي ما احنا متفقين تاني طيب ال valvovaginitis نرجع تاني لل valvovaginitis ايه هو ال valvovaginitis ال valvovaginitis هي عبارة عن infection in the vagina and the valva of young girl اوكي طيب ال young girl ايه المشكلة ايه المود of transmission sexual abuse يبقى sexual abuse أدى إلى انتقال النيسيريا جونورية. السيكشوال أبيوز أدى إلى انتقال النيسيريا جونورية to this young girl. But this young girl has immature acidity في الفاجينا and immature still immature normal flora because they are young young girl. This will allow النيسيريا جونورية to persist and multiply in the vagina and on the external genitalia, the vulva, causing the vulva vagina. Okay? How to diagnose a case of Neisseria gonorrhea or gonorrhea infection? زي ما اتفقنا في الميكروبيولوجي إن السبيسمين لا it will not reach the cervix. It will not reach the cervix because in young girls, girls if they are virgin, it will not reach the cervix. It will associate it with vulvovagina. Okay? What about the specimen? The specimen you should take the urethral discharge from the penis of male or the cervical and urethral discharge from the female. We take the eye of the eye from the discharge that is present in the cervix or on the penis. After taking the specimen, you will start direct detection in the specimen by gram staining. Gram staining will show what in men it will show. This is the macrophages. Okay, and this small dots are the gram-negative diplococci arranged in pairs inside the phagocytic cells and outside the phagocytic cells. زي ما احنا شايفين 
multiplying bacteria inside the phagocytic cells. This is diagnostic in male. If you take a urethral discharge from a man with painful maturation, excessive urethral discharge, and by direct film gram staining, we get that there is intracellular gram negative pairs of cocci intra and extracellular. It is diagnostic for acute male gonorrhea. What about females? In a bar in women. لا, in women, you should proceed for cultivation. Why? Because gram stain film from the female cervix may be contaminated by the normal flora, from the normal vaginal flora. ممكن وانا خارج بالسواب اخد معايا جزء من الفاجينال فلورا. تمام؟ فلو انا عندي small number of gonococci, I cannot detect it. فيديني false negative result. أو إن يكون عندي large huge amount of normal flora اللي قد تكون قد maybe similar to the gonococci يعني ممكن ألاقي عندي normal vaginal flora gram negative cocci وبالتالي أقول إن أنا عندي نيسيريا جونوريا انفكشن وهي البيشنت بتاعي ما عندوش يبقى أنا ممكن يكون عندي الكمية قليلة جدا وبالتالي أقول إن العيان ما عندهاش وهي عندها يبقى false negative أو العكس إن يكون النورمال فلورا اللي شبه الجونو كوكاي موجودة بكميات كبيرة فأقول إن العيان بتاعي عنده وهو ما عندوش فولس بوز. أجين إن كيس إن في ميلز الدايركت جرام ستين سنت إز ديفيكالت فور إنتربرتيشن إز نوت سفيشنت فور دايجنوزيس. أي شود بروسيد فور كالتيفيشن. واي إف ذا جونو كوكاي إز بريزنت إن فيري سمول نمبر أي كان نوت ديتكت إت وبالتالي سو أي مي ساي إت إز ا نيجاتيف سبيسمنت إن إت إز نوت نيجاتيف. So it is false negative. Or another option, if the normal flora is present in a huge amount, the vaginal flora present in a huge amount, while I'm taking the swab from the cervix, part of the normal flora contaminating the this swab. Presence of microbial flora, which is similar in morphology to gonococci, may give a false positive result. Your patient have no nystagmus gonorrhea infection. And you said that this patient have Neisseria gonorrhea infection. So in women, due to presence of normal flora, it is difficult for interpretation. I should proceed to cultivation for diagnosis. In women only, yes. In women, I should proceed to cultivation. In men, I send a lab report that the direct uh, examination is positive for Neisseria gonorrhea. But again, in both male and female, I will proceed for cultivation for isolation and antibiotic sensitivity. To write the proper antibiotic for your patient, I should isolate the organism in both conditions to proceed for the proper antibiotic therapy. Okay? Another method for direct detection is detection of the microbial or the bacteria, Neisseria uh, specific uh, DNA by the use of nucleic acid probe. If you remember from year one, nucleic acid probe is a very specific complementary strand to the DNA of the bacteria and it is labeled by fluorescent dye. So I can detect the bacterial DNA directly in the specimen by the DNA probe which is complementary to a very specific part of the DNA of Neisseria gonorrhea, and it is labeled by fluorescent dye. If the specimen is positive by nucleic acid group, it is diagnostic for Neisseria gonorrhea. In all condition, you have to proceed for cultivation. In all condition, I have to do culture. Why? عشان أفصل البكتيريا وأبدأ أعمل لها antibiotic sensitivity testing. If I should proceed for cultivation after direct examination, cultivation on a chocolate agar or modified fire martin chocolate agar, زي ما اتفقنا it is the enriched media required for Neisseria gonorrhea, or modified fire martin by addition of antibiotics to the chocolate agar to make it selective for isolation of Neisseria gonorrhea in a carbon dioxide environment, five to ten percent in a candle jar at thirty-seven degrees. What about identification? After isolation of the organism, بعد ما بفصل البكتيريا على الشغل الأجار, بتعرف عليها زي ما قلنا, 
by direct gram staining from the chocolate above, it will give a gram negative kidney shaped cocci arranged in pair. By biochemical reaction, it is all Neisseria or oxidase test positive. How to identify Neisseria gonorrhea? All Neisseria are oxidase test positive, all Neisseria are gram negative cocci arranged in pair. How to confirm it is Neisseria gonorrhea? By biochemical reaction, it is fermenter, it can ferment a glucose sugar and turn it, uh, sorry, it can ferment the glucose with production of acid only, it will turn the sugar fluid media from pink or red to yellow. Again, you can use the nucleic acid probe after isolation of Neisseria gonorrhea or chocolate agar, you can identify the nucleic acid on the culture media by the use of nucleic acid probe, which is a very specific complementary strand to the Neisseria gonorrhea DNA, and this synthetically prepared complementary DNA strand is labeled by fluorescent dye. So I can detect the Neisseria gonorrhea DNA after isolation from the culture media or directly from the specimen. ممكن استخدم nucleic acid probe في الحالتين. بعد ما بصلها على الكالتشر ميديا أو حتى في السبيسمن دايركتلي بعد ما باخد العينة من العين أقدر استخدم النيكليك أسيد بروب في التعرف على النيسيريا جنورية لأن هو very specific بيتعرف على very specific part of the DNA of the bacterial cell ممكن أعمل دوت في العينة مباشرة أخدتها من العين وممكن أعمله بعد ما بفصل البكتيريا على الشوكليت أجر تمام؟ This is for identification of نيسيريا جنورية How to treat your patient? How to treat a patient with Sexually transmitted gonorrhea. The drug of choice or the antibiotic of choice is usually third generation cephalosporin, fifth triaxone or spectinomycin. Okay, if as a drug of choice, which is better before or after, I have to take the specimen and then start immediately antibiotic for your patient. Start third generation cephalosporin after taking the specimen. The specimen will take about maximum two days, two to three days for cultivation and antibiotic sensitivity. If the antibiotic sensitivity result the same like I started, يعني the antibiotic sensitivity a little in its fifth ribosome, so I will continue on the fifth ribosome. If the antibiotic sensitivity result indicating that the Neisseria gonorrhea is resistant to fifth ribosome, third generation cephalosporin, I will shift to another antibiotic. Okay, طيب. A very important point is that Neisseria gonorrhea is resistant to tetracycline and azithromycin. Although you should treat your patient by a combination. لازم هعالج العيان بتاعي بالاثنين by combined therapy of third generation cephalosporin and tetracycline or azithromycin. Why? Although it is resistant to it, yes, for possible concurrent infection by chlamydia. إحنا قلنا إن الكلاميديا إكسلنت، الكلاميديا هي السكند موست كومن كوز أوف سيكشوالي ترانسميتد أكيوت يورثرايت، يبقى تو كفر بوث بوسيبل إنفكشن الكلاميديا أند نايسيريا بيكوز كلاميديا أند نايسيريا أر ذا تو موست كومن كوزز أوف أكيوت يورثرايت، سو يو شود جيف يور بيشنت بوث ثيرد جينيشن كيفالوسبورين سيكترا جزون أند تيترا سايكن أور أذيثروماين. To cover, the streptrazone will treat Neisseria gonorrhea, and streptocyclin or azithromycin will treat the chlamydia. Okay, till you get the lab report, the guys may give you a ticket ill specimen from the microbiology. I know if it's Neisseria, just or Neisseria and the chlamydia, and I know also the proper antibiotic therapy. Accordingly, I will treat my patient. How to prevent Neisseria gonorrhea? If you have a patient. With gonorrhea, he should use a condom during sexual intercourse to prevent transmission of Neisseria to his partner. Okay, and proper treatment of any symptomatic patient to prevent sexually transmitted disease. If by proper treatment of any symptomatic patient and by the use of condom during sexual intercourse to prevent transmission of any sexually transmitted bacterial infection. Okay. Is there any possibility for repeated infection by Neisseria gonorrhea? Yes, 
if a patient have an attack of Neisseria gonorrhea and treated completely and he has an antibody against this Neisseria gonorrhea. This patient is exposed again to Neisseria gonorrhea, he may have repeated gonococcal infection. يعني ممكن العيان بتاعي بعد ما يتعالج ويبقى عنده antibodies يجي له gonococcal infection تاني. ليه؟ هي أسباب ال repeated gonococcal infection؟ What are the causes of repeated gonococcal infection? High antigenic variation of gonococcal billi. Again, لو إحنا فاكرين ال billi, it is the organ of attachment of gonococci to the host cell. فلو ال gonococci in a continuous genetic variation, high antigenic variation of gonococcal billi, so it can infect or reinfect my patient again due to Continuously highly antigenic variation of gonococcal billi. دائما بتغير شكل البلاي بتاعتها والantigenic structure of the billi وبالتالي الantibodies اللي موجودة عندي على السيرفس اللي صنعت against the previous attack will not resist this type of billi. تمام؟ إيه كمان the nature of infection. The infection is present on the epithelial lining and the mucosal lining of the urethra. So it is a superficial infection. What else? لو إحنا فاكرين إن the virulence factor is the production of immunoglobulin A protein, an enzyme which destroys the immunoglobulin A. Immunoglobulin A protein, an enzyme. لو إحنا فاكرين one of the virulence factor of Neisseria gonorrhea is immunoglobulin A protein, which can destroy the surface immunoglobulin A, the class A immunoglobulin. وده المين انتي بوديز اند ذيس از ذا مين اميونوجلوبين بريزنت اون ذا ميوكوزال سيرفيس اند ذا ابيثيريال سيرفيس يبقى تاني ممكن البيشنت بتاعي يجيله ريبيتد اتاك اوف جونوكوكال انفكشن بالرغم انه تعالج وبقى عنده انتي بوديز ايوه لانها بتقدر تغير شكل البلاي بتاعتها وتقدر تبقى اتاتش تاني للميوكوزال سيرفيس تعمل لي انفكشن تاني عن طريق الانتيجينيك فاريشن اوف بلاي لأن الانفكشن بتاعي سوبرفيشال ولأن البكتيريا بتقدر تطلع اميونوجلوبين A بروتيز اللي ممكن يكسر الاميونوجلوبين A اللي اوريدي موجود على الميوكوزال سيرفيس والابيثيريال سيرفيس يبقى البيشنت مي هاف ريبيتد انفكشن ديو تو ماركد انتيجينيك فاريشن اوف ذا اورجن اوف اتاتشمنت ويتش از ذا بلاي سو ذا هوست سيل ويل نوت ريكوجنايز ذيس نيو تايب اوف انفكشن بيكوز ذا انفكشن از سوبرفيشال اند ديو تو بريزنس اوف Neisseria gonorrhea virulence factor, which is immunoglobulin A protein, which can destroy the immunoglobulin A, the class A antibodies, which are present on the mucosal surface, leading to repeated attack of gonococcal infection. Okay. Any question? Thank you. Any question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.